Gary on the Con Man Conley. And that's not just low-hanging fruit for a nickname, people. He is an actual con man to quarterbacks. He's a deceiver. He's a swindler. You think you've got him. You think he's out of the picture. And he'll just show up out of nowhere and take the ball away. I talked a couple weeks ago about how Malik Hooker patrolled the middle of the Buckeye defense and how his range scared the crap out of quarterbacks. And the same is true for Conley. If you want zone coverage ability, range, and ball skills in your boundary corner, this is your guy. He's got speed, he's explosive in short areas for his size, and of course he's got that big 6 foot 200 pound frame as well. He's roughly the same size as Patrick Peterson, but a little bit longer arms and a little bit lighter, and he tested very similar to him at the combine as well, or just barely under his level in certain drills. Legit 4-4 40-yard dash, 37 in the vert, 6-6-8 three cone, and he was butter smooth in drill work. That trip to Indianapolis, for me, solidified him as a potential top 15 or definitely a top 20 pick. And as an absolute floor, I don't think there's any way he gets past the Oakland Raiders at 24. He fits them perfectly. Systems like the one they run up in the Bay that really like size, length, and speed on the boundaries, I mean, they dream of prospects like Kylie in that building. He's got everything they want athletically, plus he's got great feet to mirror releases, good balance, and he's a very fluid mover at his size, which is a rarity. He can open his hips and run in an instant in man coverage. And not only that, but in that defense, he would be playing a lot of bail technique into deep third zones as well, which he already did at Ohio State. And that would allow him to use that speed, ball tracking ability, and length to get his hands on passes and create more opportunities for Derek Carr in that offense. Hell, even if you aren't using him as a pure press and press bail corner in a cover three system, he showed he can handle some off-man coverage responsibility from time to time as well, which most bigger corners cannot do at all. You look at him here against D.D. Westbrook, one of the best receivers in the nation, and this is textbook off-man coverage from a nine-yard depth in the red zone. He's got inside leverage to give him some breathing room against an inside break, while still pointing his hips outside so he can drive on any outside breaks. This is a perfect position to be in because he can react to any route in the tree from this spot and from this leverage. Westbrook snapped off that out route and did initially have separation to make the catch, but Conley was able to close that gap fast enough with his explosiveness and use all of that 33-inch arm length to get in there and break up the throw. It's hard to find a bigger corner that can survive in off-man coverages like this one, but Conley can because he's just that physically gifted. In fact, he's so athletic that his natural ability, to me at least, allowed him to consistently get away with what I consider to be horrible, horrible technique with his hands. Game after game, the one trend I noticed above everything else is that even when he's lined up at bump and run looks, he's constantly allowing free releases from receivers and giving them tons of space between them while they run their routes downfield. I'm talking like two to three yard gaps downfield, which for a corner in the NFL is practically suicide. He just doesn't ever use his hands to maintain contact with receivers, which you need to do. You have to be on them, touching them, grabbing them, feeling the route the entire way downfield, because that point of contact is often the only way you're going to know if a break is coming. If you can't feel the route, you can't stop the route, at least not in the NFL. You look at this snap against Tulsa here, and he showed really nice feet to break down quickly in space as soon as he read that curl route. But in the pros, this is a first down all day long. He gave the receiver so much space when they were breaking, and he didn't have any hands on him to feel this route. And keep in mind, this is the kind of route that's usually used as a back shoulder timing route to move the sticks as safely as possible. So when that receiver breaks, you need to already be on him. You need to have a hand on his shoulder, feel him chop down, and at that point, you need to chop down yourself and flip your head to the ball. Because as soon as you do, it's going to be right there, and you got to be ready for it. You don't have time to recover on this route. Either you're already there, or that's a completion. Straight up. He was just lucky that this was Tulsa and not the Packers, because if that's how he's going to play against Jordy Nelson or Randall Cobb, they would eat him alive on third and six. That is their go-to route to move the chains. Similarly against Oklahoma, again, he's allowing tons of space, not getting any hands on the receiver at all, which is just begging them to attack him with a back shoulder throw. He technically gets the pass break up here, but in reality, I consider this a negative snap because the ball was placed very poorly by Baker Mayfield, so the receiver had to go through Conley's body to get to it anyway, rather than having it placed away from Conley where only the receiver could get it. Plus, since Conley did not maintain any contact during the route, he couldn't feel the break coming, so he was playing catch up as the receiver adjusted his body to the ball. If he had hands on him, he could have felt that he was slowing down and immediately spun that head around to look for the ball. 
but he didn't flip that head until after he was already mauling the guy in the air. He had no idea where the ball was here, and he's lucky he wasn't flagged for pass interference, because in the NFL, he probably would have been. He was in catch-up mode the entire time on this route, because he put himself in catch-up mode. So when the ball came to him, his only option was to grab, then turn his head, and hope for the best. And I'll tell you what, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, and Aaron Rodgers are not missing that back shoulder throw. If he wants to give that window to receivers all day because of his poor hand usage, they will gladly accept every single free first down that he gives them. He has got to start using his hands. He's got to introduce himself to receivers on the release and just never leave their side like he's doing on these snaps right here. And as you can see, he's done it before, so he just needs to do it every single snap from here on out. I mean, he's got 33 inch arms. There's no conceivable reason why he shouldn't be squeezing routes into boundaries and jamming the shit out of people at the line of scrimmage. With that length, you should be able to do that. But even his jams were weak. It was this flat-footed, two-handed press whenever he did use it, which wasn't that often, but whenever he did jam, it was just flat out weak. He's got to step into that press and really knock people off the line or else it's just kind of pointless. You look at Jalen Ramsey last year and he's also got 33 inch arms and when he would jam people it was disruptive. It was how it should be. He'd punch people like he was out for blood. He was putting some nastiness into it. And that's what I want to see Conley do. Jam with authority and anger and keep your hands on them all the way down the route. If you want to be a good press corner in the NFL you need to actually be a press corner. That athleticism can only save you for so long. And I know it sounds like I'm being harsh on him, but that's only because I've seen him execute perfect stack coverage downfield before. I know it's in there somewhere. I've seen him lock his eyes on those receiver's hips on the release. I've seen him pivot on one foot, flip, and take off with the nine route. I've seen him slide into stack position, and when the wideout turned his head for the ball, he turned his head too, tracked it in, and used that huge athleticism to jump up and take it away. I've seen all of that. He can be a great corner in this league. If he cleans up that hand usage, he can turn into literally a faster version of Josh Norman, which I guarantee you pretty much every team would want on their roster. But again, because he's not a finished product yet, he's probably going to end up going a bit lower than he should. And while that's unfortunate for him, it's very good for the teams in the back half of the first round. For me though, if I'm a general manager, let's just say I'm Reggie McKenzie for the Raiders again, I'm not drafting Conley for what he is right now. I'm drafting him for what I think he will be which is a Pro Bowl corner for a defense that desperately needs one. Again, he's got range, he's got length, he's got remarkable fluidity for his frame, he's a willing tackler in space, even though he's not super physical at taking on blocks, he's not afraid to hit people. His background as a wide receiver in high school really shows up in his ball skills as well, but most importantly of all, he's still got a lot of room to grow. He's already really good and he can get way better. If he goes to a cover one and cover three system that suits his skill set and they teach him how to use his hands, oh man, he is going to be good. Like, erase number one receivers on a weekly basis kind of good. Like, Jalen Ramsey kind of good. He's a first round pick all day long, folks, and I guarantee you whatever team gets him is going to be very, very happy in the long run. All right, that's all I got for this week. Next Thursday, we're moving on from one highly graded cornerback to another, LSU's Tredavious White. That LSU secondary seems like it's always nasty, and he's one of the best players they put out from that group in probably the last four or five years. So, of course, I'll have all that for you next week. And as usual, these are our new Patreon subscribers this week that were kind enough to support the channel and help it grow with a donation. Thank you to everyone who's tossed in a couple bucks so far. We're averaging about $50 a week in new subscribers, which is even better than I'd hoped for this early in the channel's history as far as growth rates. So we're doing great. Thank you to everyone again. I really, really appreciate it. And we'll be back next week with Tredavious White, so stay tuned. Until then, later. Later.